What if I told you that iron, B12 deficiency, and other vitamins play a critical role in your hemoglobin A1C ratings? Maybe you've been told you have prediabetes or some kind of blood sugar problem based on a hemoglobin A1C test and you're thinking, something doesn't add up here. My name is Dr. Tara Nella, and this channel is dedicated to helping you understand your health and understand your body better. This video, we're going to explore the impact of vitamins on A1C, but it may not be exactly what you think. Instead of looking at what vitamins and things you can take to lower your A1C, to lower your blood sugar, we're looking at the role of vitamins in creating WAD A1C readings. We're especially going to highlight one specific nutrient deficiency, B12 deficiency, and how that affects hemoglobin A1C readings. But it also has a broader context for other vitamin deficiencies too, which we're going to get into. So if you're liking these videos and want to continue getting videos like this, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe to continue getting videos like this. All right, let's jump into the video. All right, so before we jump into the vitamin impact on hemoglobin A1C readings, we need to quickly review what this test actually measures and what it's trying to inform us about. So the hemoglobin A1C test is used to diagnose and understand what's happening with your blood sugar for things like insulin resistance, diabetes, prediabetes, and even people that have quote unquote normal levels of blood sugar or think that they do. It's an important tool to help understand the area under the curve in terms of your exposure to glucose, what's happening in your blood over, say, a longer period of time. So it measures the percentage of hemoglobin molecules in the blood that are glycated. And you can think of the glycation of hemoglobin molecules as being kind of coated with sugar or the percentage that is not coated with sugar. And so this reflects the amount of damage that could be occurring in your body from higher glucose levels because that glycation process is basically damaging those proteins. And we typically want to see the percentage of glycation occurring in the hemoglobin molecule at around 5.4 or maybe a little bit less for optimal ranges. So while the hemoglobin A1C test is a very valuable tool, it's only as accurate as the test reflects your underlying physiology. And so it's estimating your blood sugar based on the assumption that your red blood cells live for 120 days, but not everyone's cells actually live this long. And we're going to discuss that in more detail below. But for instance, if your cells live longer, it means that they're being exposed to that glycation process, the sugar or glucose longer. So it changes the equation also known as the estimate of your A1C, and it's going to make that estimation go down. So there's specific things that can reliably change how long those cells are going to live. Like we discussed in a previous video, how your body's making hemoglobin and how it's making red blood cells can affect how long those cells are living. But what if we have normal red blood cells, normal hemoglobin? What if it's within the normal range, but just on the very low end of the range? Is that going to affect your hemoglobin A1C? And also what kind of levels might affect your hemoglobin such that it's within the normal range, but low normal. So we're going to discuss a broad range of these things in this video. But first, let's look at the role of different vitamins on hemoglobin production. Mainly, we'll look at a paper on the impact of vitamin B12 deficiency on hemoglobin A1C. Now, the most common reason for vitamin B12 deficiency is from low intake of foods that contain vitamin B12 or also poor absorption of the cobalamin or vitamin B12 from that food. But medications can also lead to this effect of B12 deficiency because they can affect your absorption. And one commonly used for treating diabetes and sometimes prediabetes is metformin. And that's just kind of an aside. We're not going to go into too much detail on that topic. But in this study evaluating vitamin B12 deficiency and how it affects hemoglobin A1C, they found that pre-diabetic patients that had a vitamin B12 deficiency, when you're treating those vitamin B12 deficient diabetic or pre-diabetic patients, resulted in a notable decrease or improvement in their hemoglobin A1C levels. So basically, they gave these pre-diabetic patients vitamin B12 over three months, and after receiving that vitamin B12, it resulted in significant improvements in their hemoglobin A1C and actual hemoglobin production compared to those who did not receive the vitamin B12 treatment. So specifically, they had an improvement of 0.94 
grams per deciliter in increase in their hemoglobin levels. And this corresponded to a decrease of hemoglobin A1c of about 0.24%. This finding is crucial because it suggests that untreated B12 can lead to a misdiagnosis of prediabetes or potentially even diabetes, resulting in inaccurate or inappropriate treatment planning. And one of my patients actually pointed this out to me, and it got me thinking more critically about this test, which I'm going to share with you as well. But let's stick with the study for just a second here. So based on their findings of this study, 35% of the patients that were diagnosed with prediabetes after treating for the vitamin B12 deficiency, they came into the normal range, 35% of those, which is a huge margin there. And it's possible that if they tested them even longer at six months, they may have gotten even better results. So this information is just revealing to us that a significant portion of people that are diagnosed with diabetes and prediabetes when it's based solely on the A1C test may be misdiagnosed. And just as a way of an example, if a male has a hemoglobin that goes from 13.8 to 15, we can estimate a potential decrease in the hemoglobin A1C by about 0.3%. And again, it could be more than that. So based on this information, it's clear that number one, hemoglobin A1C test is unreliable in people that have anemia, specifically vitamin B12 deficient anemia, but it probably applies to a lot of other cases of anemia as well. Number two, the more severe the anemia, the less reliable the test is going to be. And number three, we need to interpret our hemoglobin A1C test in the context of understanding a more thorough or broad understanding of what's happening with our red blood cells and what's happening with our hemoglobin in particular. So how exactly is a vitamin B12 deficiency causing such an inaccurate effect on the hemoglobin A1C test? Vitamin B12 deficiency anemia causes a false elevation in A1C level because it increases the survival time of those red blood cells. And most but not all kinds of anemias are going to do this, by the way. In this case, the B12 is needed to make DNA and the resulting red blood cells. So the deficiency can cause anemia, which in turn affects the hemoglobin A1C reading because the red blood cells basically don't turn over as many new red blood cells in the existing ones stay in the system for longer. When the amount of production goes down, the length that those red blood cells stay in circulation goes up. So there's an inverse relationship there, meaning they're exposed to that glucose longer. But what happens, like I said earlier, when there's no anemia, but there's just a low normal hemoglobin? Also, what about other vitamins responsible for making red blood cells? Is there some kind of dynamic with those types of nutrients and vitamins as well? My understanding is that these other kinds of vitamin deficiencies also have the potential to affect your hemoglobin A1C test. And that's because when you're deficient in nutrients that make DNA, that make red blood cells, your body is trying to, again, preserve those red blood cells longer, leading them to sit in your system longer and accumulate more of that glycation. So this is true for things like folate and iron and vitamin B6 and thiamine. Basically, any nutrient that's associated with or needed for red blood cell hemoglobin production or DNA production has the potential to cause this problem. The exception here is that when those red blood cells are being destroyed just as quickly as they're made, that means they're not going to be around as long and therefore not exposed to that glucose as long. And keep in mind too that nutrient deficiencies are just one of many things that can cause those red blood cells to live longer. And we addressed that a little bit in the previous video on this topic. So what can we do about this if this is occurring or we think this is occurring? Are there alternative tests or is there other things we can do to kind of help us understand what's going on in our bodies? Well, basically there are. And despite the efforts to eliminate the technical errors with hemoglobin A1C tests, studies consistently show that these and other factors lead to some inaccuracies in hemoglobin A1C when compared with actually testing blood sugar levels. And so while these may lead to false increases or sometimes decreases in your hemoglobin A1C test, in certain circumstances, it's important to note too that the test itself is still helpful. We don't want to necessarily throw everything out just because some of the time some people are going to have an inaccurate result. 
So instead of just throwing it out, we want to use other things to kind of triangulate what is going on with your actual glucose reading, what's going on inside your body. Like with many of my patients, I always tell them that it's important to count your carbs so we can get an idea of whether or not your levels in your blood are reflecting what we would actually expect. Most of us are pretty poor at estimating how many carbohydrates we're consuming unless that measurement has been done somewhat recently. For instance, if you just say, well, I don't eat a lot of carbs, I don't eat this and that, but you've never actually sat down and measured how many carbohydrates you're consuming, well, chances are you're going to underestimate it. And in cases like this where you think, well, I really shouldn't have a high A1C, well, you might actually have a high A1C because your blood sugar levels are actually elevated versus something going wrong with your red blood cells or hemoglobin production. So that's kind of step one in triangulating this or calibrating whether or not you think your A1C test is reflective of some kind of high blood sugar levels. On the other hand, if you count all your carbs and you come back and say, well, it looks like I only eat about 60 net grams of carbohydrates per day for the last, you know, two months or so, and your A1C is saying you're at 5.5, 5.6 or higher, well, there's definitely a mismatch there. And further testing may be appropriate to help you figure that out. There are, of course, alternative tests to the hemoglobin A1C test. Uh, there's things like continuous glucose monitor, and fructosamine, which don't necessarily rely on the hemoglobin production. In the case of the fructosamine, it's more based on the glycation process that's occurring on the proteins in your body, different proteins like albumin type proteins. And based on the life of those proteins, you can get an average glucose from that, basically the average glucose over the last couple of weeks. So these are some things you can do when you think that your vitamin deficiency or some sort of nutrient deficiency is causing your hemoglobin A1C test to not reflect what's actually occurring in your body. The main point is to evaluate your hemoglobin A1C test in the context of understanding what's going on with your red blood cells and the hemoglobin and other things like nutritional states that may be affecting your ability to produce those red blood cells and hemoglobin. This more global approach or deeper perspective is going to help ensure you get an accurate diagnosis and that you're following the right treatment plan, whether you have an abnormal or you get the okay, you know, good health. You want to make sure it's actually reflecting what's going on inside your body. If you're undergoing some kind of treatment for B12 deficiency or iron deficiency where you're anemic, be aware that your A1C levels may decrease significantly, providing you a more accurate result after you're replete with that nutrient. So hopefully this helps you better understand the impact of vitamins on hemoglobin A1C tests and helps you better understand your health in general. If you have questions, please drop them in the comment section. I'm happy to answer your questions. If you want a more nuanced, detailed answer, consider joining the membership program. We'll have more time and attention to dedicate to your questions. Thanks again for watching. And until next time, might I interest you in another video on hemoglobin A1C testing right here.